Day and swing traders can make good money during earnings season, which is upon us, but have you ever wondered how you can take advantage of earnings releases using options? I'm Seth Freiberg, the head trader of SMB Capital's Options Trading Desk here in Manhattan, and the traders on our desk have developed powerful techniques for trading earnings using short-term option strategies that can be very effective. In this video, we're going to show you a really interesting way to play earnings releases with a strategy that exploits the unique properties of options and how they respond to earnings announcements. So if that sounds like something you'd like to learn, then stick around because I think you're going to find this video enlightening. Hi, I'm Seth Freiberg, and I'm the head trader of SMB Capital's Options Trading Desk. SMB Capital is a proprietary trading firm located in Midtown Manhattan, and we provide capital for options and equity traders from all over the world, They're trading both remotely and in our offices here in New York City. Now, I'd like to suggest that you click on our subscribe button right now so that you don't miss any of our free trading videos that we produce for traders and investors all over the world. They're really very valuable. Okay, so. Earnings season is here as companies begin reporting how they performed in the third quarter of 2021, which just ended, and that's traditionally a time when prop firms can make really good money as the market reacts, often strongly, to a company's strong or weak results compared to what was expected by Wall Street's analysts. And we're often asked to explain how options traders make money during earnings season, and there really are some powerful techniques that involve options around earnings. Once you get a handle on how options contracts generally behave as an earnings announcement approaches. Now we're going to be showing you an example of a particular strategy known as the double calendar around a recent Amazon earnings announcement. But before we get into how trading Amazon earnings using the double calendar option strategy is so advantageous, I wanted to let you know that if you wanted to learn three option strategies that our pro traders use, including the unique options trick that allows you to make money while you wait to buy stocks or ETFs at the price you want, and the options income strategy that allows you to make consistent money whether the market goes up, down, or sideways, and how to make money on a stock or index trade even if you're outright wrong on direction, then click the link that should be appearing now at the top right corner of your screen that's going to open up the free workshop registration page in a new window, so don't worry, you won't lose this video. Or you can register directly for free at optionsclass.com. Believe me, you don't want to miss this, so pause this video, sign up now, and then resume watching. The options contracts that are derived from Amazon are known as stock options or equity options. And I realize that most of you probably know something about how stock options work, but just for a quick review, and this is going to be fast, What's known as a call option on a stock entitles the buyer of that option to purchase 100 shares of that stock at a certain price called the strike price of that option, regardless of what price the stock is actually trading at at any time before that option expires. What's called a put option, on the other hand, entitles the buyer of that put to sell 100 shares of a stock he owns at the strike price of that put, again, regardless of what price the stock is trading at at any time before that option expires. The buyer of the option pays what's called a premium to the seller of the option because the seller of the option is taking the risk that the stock will go past the strike price of the option, in which case the buyer can exercise his option. So in the case of a call, even if the stock has gone way above the strike price of the call, the call buyer can exercise his right to buy 100 shares of that strike price. In other words, he's entitled to buy the shares way below market. He could flip them the next minute and make a huge profit on those shares in that case. Or conversely, on the put option, if the market goes way below the strike price of that put option, the buyer of that put option has the right to sell his shares of that stock at the strike price of the put option that he's bought, even if the stock's price has gone way below the strike price of the put, which effectively puts a floor on how much he can lose owning that stock. Now, on the other hand, at expiration, if you've sold a call and the market closes below the strike price of the call, then unless that call was previously exercised, the call expires worthless and the call seller just pockets the premium. Similarly, if you sold a put and the market closed above the strike price of that put, 
then unless the put was previously exercised, it expires worthless and the call seller just pockets the premium. Okay, so now keeping that in mind, let's move to Amazon's price chart right after the fourth quarter of 2020, a few weeks into the new year and before Amazon would be announcing its fourth quarter earnings on February 1st. And as you can see, Amazon stock was running into resistance around 3,500 during the last half of 2020. And it also seemed to be consistently finding support in the 2950 area. So a trader could reasonably think of those as support and resistance areas as earnings approached given that the earnings announcement will be the best catalyst for breaking out of that range, depending upon how the announcement comes out. And so with that range in mind, let's say that an options trader becomes aware, as was the case, that Amazon was going to release its earnings on February 1st, 2020. And so he opened up his broker platform and found an options chain that expires right before Amazon releases its earnings, which is the options chain expiring on January 29th and simultaneously finds an options chain that expires right after Amazon releases its earnings report on February 5th. And he executes the following options trade. He sells two of those 3,500 calls right around where Amazon has been hitting resistance, and he does so on the January 29th options chain. And simultaneously, he buys two 3,500 calls expiring on February 5th after earnings. At the same time, he heads down to support and sells two of those 2950 puts again on the before earnings January 29th chain and buys at the same time the 2950 strike puts expiring on February 5th. And so this formation, a short call and put in the week before earnings and a long call and put at the same strike price right after earnings is known as a double calendar earnings trade. And it is one way you can take advantage of how options respond to impending earnings announcements. Now, let's take a look at how much it costs to enter this trade. And so we'll start with those 3,500 calls that we bought, the ones that expire after earnings, and we pay $29.95 for those. But remember, each options contract represents 100 shares of stock. And so you multiply that by 100, and we're buying two of those which results in a total cost, as you can see from the calculation, of $5,990. And we sell the same strike price calls expiring a week before, and we get less for those $15.20, in this case, bringing in $3,040, as you can see from the, the calculation. And that makes sense, right? That we'd get in less because those options expire earlier. And especially with earnings coming up between those two expirations on February 1st, the chances of the stock price moving a lot in that next week are pretty high. Besides which, even if earnings were not between the two, the price just has more time to take off in one direction or another. And so the ones that expire earlier will always have a cheaper price. But in any event, we got in the $3,040 in cash. And so that reduces the cost of the double calendar because that is income to us. And the same story goes for the 2950 puts where we paid $44.73 for those farther out calls costing us a total of $89.46, but we bring in $51.66 selling the closer in 2950 puts. So when you net it all down, it comes out to a total cost of $6,730 to enter this double calendar trade. And so at this point, we have to allow the market to render its verdict. And so let's move forward two weeks to January 27th, a few days before the Jan January 29th options expire. And as you can see, Amazon has now rallied about 50 points up to 32.17. So now let's take a look back at the options change that we're trading. And as you can see, something surprising has occurred. You see, Amazon didn't move very much since we opened up the trade. It only went up 50 points to 32.17, which is only a 2% move for Amazon. And now, so the short options expiring in two days on January 29th, the short calls way above Amazon's price at 3,500 and the short puts way below Amazon's price down at 29.50, both of those have almost no value because the market is thinking that without a major catalyst like earnings coming up, it's hard to believe that Amazon could hit either of those options within two days. And so they would both most likely expire worthless. Why? Well, think about it. 
A 3500 call, if Amazon is trading around 3217, will have no value in two days because no one's going to exercise their right to buy shares of Amazon 300 points higher than they're trading on the open market. And the same thing goes for the puts down at 2950. No one's going to exercise their rights to sell their Amazon shares at 2950 when they're trading for more than 250 points higher than that in the open market. And so the greatest likelihood is that both options are just going to expire worthless for their own reasons. And so they have shrunk to close to zero in price, as you can see. But the ones expiring after earnings, expiring on February 5th, those are a completely different story. And as you can see from the prices, the two options, if you combine them, have almost completely held their value. And this difference, the ones expiring before earnings losing all their value, and the ones expiring after earnings retaining most of their value, that difference in behavior is due to the timing of the expiration of those options. The ones that expire after earnings are reported have to maintain most of the value because earnings is such a wild card and co can cause such radical rallies or crashes in a stock's price that the market has to price in the potential for those shares to shoot straight through support or resistance. Because if the earnings report is so well received that the shares shoot through resistance, then the seller of the calls we own is going to have to deliver those shares way below what they're worth potentially, taking a big markdown in his account. Or the seller of those puts may be forced to buy them way above where the market's trading if the earnings report is lousy, causing a markdown immediately in his account as soon as those shares hit his account. And so those must be priced heavily also to recognize the risk of that happening. And so those options retain their value because they have to wait to see how earnings turn out. And they have no idea at this point how the market will receive Amazon's earnings. And so now let's calculate what this means if we wanted to close this trade at this point. And the way that you close a spread trade like this is that you buy back the options that you sold to close them out and you sell the options that you bought to liquidate those. And so if we look at how that would have played out in this case, you can see from the calculation that with those long 3,500 calls holding most of their value, we're able to sell them for $8,376. While the short 3,500 calls expiring in a few days were cheap to buy back, totaling 676. And the same story is true for the long puts, which also were fully priced. And we received 5686 for those, while it cost us only $472 to buy back the short puts for the exact same reason as the short calls were so cheap. And so finally, subtracting out the original cost of the double calendar trade in the first place, we end up with a profit of $6,184, which is a 91% return in two weeks, which is not too shabby. And so what I'd like you to take away from today's video is that there is a way to trade earnings that really has nothing to do with price action after an earnings release or predicting how the market will react to earnings announcements, but instead provides an opportunity that most traders wouldn't normally even think about. And that is that options which expire after earnings and are therefore exposed to an earnings announcement will have to hold their value in order to absorb the risk of the price movement after the earnings release. Whereas the options that expire before the earnings release aren't exposed to the price movement coming off of the earnings announcement and therefore lose a ton of value as they move close to expiring. And so that relative difference in the behavior of those two options expiration dates explains why this trade works. If the options you're selling will lose their value as they get close to expiration, but the options you're buying will hold their value, well then that's a success formula, isn't it? Just as we illustrated. And the more you learn about options trading, and the more you'll be able to see and take advantage of so many opportunities just like this because you'll learn how options are valued and you'll be able to exploit that knowledge to your advantage. Now, just to remind you, if you're serious about your trading, you need to check out the free intensive options class that we're currently running, where you'll learn three real world option strategies that our professional options traders use all the time. Just click the link that should be appearing now at the top right corner of your screen, or you can just head on over to optionsclass.com to register for this free 
workshop directly. It really is a rare opportunity for retail traders and investors to learn directly from Wall Street traders, but that's exactly what you'll be getting through this free online workshop. So click the link to sign up now before you miss it. And please don't forget to click on the subscribe button right now so that you won't miss all of the free trading videos that we're constantly posting on our channel to help you to improve your game as a trader.